Well, next up, it's Oxford United versus Yeovil, two teams whose recent pasts have seen the move in different directions. Oxford United these days are in the conference, albeit right at the top, whilst Yeovil are established in League One. There was a famous face greeting guests in the, guests in the director's box. Jim Rosenthal will be presiding over tomorrow's draw. That's for tomorrow, though. This is today. Here's your commentator, Tony Jones. Oxford United's priority is a return to the Football League, but a cup run would be a welcome bonus. And Chris Wilder's team isn't short of cup experience. Jack Midson was in the Histon team that put out both Swindon and Leeds United from League One last season. Yeovil's plea to Reading to allow on loan goalkeeper Alex McCarthy to play was rejected, meaning Richard Martin gets his chance. Tottenham have been more accommodating, extending the loans of teenagers Stephen Corker, Ryan Mason and John Abika. Steve Cook is this afternoon's referee. Merton. Merton losing out to Clist. Knocked away by Corker. And Green is in here. It's come back out to Midson. Green was actually in an offside position then, but worrying moments for Yeovil then. Alcock initially in trouble. Didn't get hold of the clearance, it was jabbed forward to Green. Brave goalkeeping by Martin. He was able to recover quickly enough to ensure that he got there. Yeovil now managed by Terry Skiverton, who scored Yeovil's equaliser in the first round last season against Stockport County. 1-1 draw. Yeovil going out in a replay. Nixon managed the flick on them, but the whistle had already gone. Swept in by Murray. In the end, there was a decent attempt. It was Foster's header. Yeovil uncomfortable there, dealing with Murray's free kick. Oxford edging ever nearer the Yeovil goal then. Abika. Abika's done well, and so too Mason. Two boys from Tottenham combining well then. Abika's strength initially to create the opening there for Ryan Mason. Constable. Constable getting away from Forbes and delivering the cross. <laughs> Fell to Midson. Best chance that Oxford have had in this first half, and it's their top scorer, James Constable, who's created the opening here. Midson catching it first time. He's done well to turn. Nearly a chance there for Bullman as well. Almost played in by Forbes as he attempted to clear. Terrific work initially by Constable to hold off the first challenge. It was Chris Wilder who took over at Oxford from Darren Patterson in December last year. Briefly had a spell as Alan Nell's assistant at Berry. Now Clist. Ran into trouble when he ran into McDonald. Good recovery by Bat. Bullman with McDonald snapping at his heels. Murray has been able to find Green. And Midson's there! And Oxford United have taken the lead. Brilliantly taken by Jack Midson. Jack Midson, who enjoyed FA Cup success with Histon last season when they defeated both Swindon and Leeds United from League One, has now put Oxford in front against Yeovil of League One. 
tremendous determination then from Oxford. Bat to win the ball back initially. Murray to pick out the pass. And Midson there was always second favourite, but he got in ahead of Alcock. And Oxford have gone in front. Chested on by Green. And an excellent finish by Jack Midson. O'Callaghan. Driven in by Alcock. Helped on towards Forbes. Montero Forbes, who only recently scored his first ever goal, finding himself goal side then. It was almost a presentable chance for him. Here's Alcock. Murder again. O'Callan, one of the two substitutes who's done well to pick out Alcock. Angle is right. McDonald. There's a bit of ping-pong going on inside that Oxford United penalty area, but they've managed to keep Yeovil out. And it's a beaker with a header, which is just wide. O'Callan, who created the opening for Alcock's run. And it fell to McDonald, and it was the joint efforts of Foster and Crichton which kept Yeovil out. Here's Forbes. The second time in this second half, Terrell Forbes has found himself in a decent position inside the Oxford United penalty area. And for the second time, he's found himself unmarked. In by Hutchins, helped away by Crichton. Matt McLaughlin, the fourth official, has just put up the illuminated board, which tells us that there will be four added minutes. Four minutes for Yeovil to try and snatch their equalising goal. A beaker! Always oh, deflected straight into the arms of Clark by his teammate Luke Foster. That may well have been the moment for Yeovil. Real anguish in the face of John Abika. Oxford got lucky. Chris Wilder is pointing at his watch because his team top of the football conference are through to the second round of the FA Cup thanks to a goal from Jack Bidson Yeovil from League One are beaten in the first round as they were 12 months ago and at the Kassam Stadium it's finished Oxford United 1, Yeovil Town 0 it's a special day for us because we, we want to go as far as possible in, in this cup competition and I think it's always everybody's dream as a, a, as a team outside the league and maybe Division 2 and Division 1 that, that they get into the third round at and, um, and obviously we're in in the second round now and we've uh, we'll dust ourselves down and we've got a, a big game next week. It is an upset but we knew we could, uh, we could compete against them and we're going for the rest of the season. All the times that I've been at Yeovil, I've done this to a few league teams in the past, so I know what they're feeling in here, and this is a new feeling for me being, um, you know, the giant that's just been killed. Yeah, very honest words there from Terry Skiverton, mm. and a great result for Oxford. But if you look at that fixture, it's a funny one, isn't it, Robbie? Because you could be forgiven for thinking, mm. that who was giant killing who exactly? Because a couple of years ago, mm. Oxford would have, been, would have been the Giants and Yeovil non-league. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at Oxford, think back to the history, cup history, and what, League Cup winners in 86, and Yeovil have spent so much time in the non-league. I think it's a credit to Terry Skiverton that they've managed to get themselves in League One, but um, Oxford are hanging on at the end, but, but we're, we're worthy winners. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Oxford clearly have priorities of getting themselves mm. back into the Football League. That's where they feel they belong. Yeah, they do, and, and, and nothing will sway from that. But, but it was good that Chris Wilder is saying they want to be in this competition as well. I, I don't believe that you should almost say, let's forget the cup and just concentrate on the league. Winning breeds success and, and confidence. And I think that they'll want to get to the third round, get a big draw, and then see how far it takes them. And I suppose the bottom line is, Robbie, wherever the club sets their priorities in terms of cup or league, mm. When they cross the white line and get onto the pitch, especially non-league players, they're going to show that they, they're, they're worth a place in the league as well, individuals. Well, it was a great occasion for, I think, Oxford United as a football club and the players to say that they all really they should be back in the football league and that will give everybody at the club confidence that they're on the right road. Saw Jim Rosenthal there in the director's box, didn't we? Schmoozing with him. He's a big Oxford fan, isn't yeah. he? But uh, he's, good. he's doing the draw tomorrow. Is yeah, that I just, sit a little bit uncomfortable? I just wonder if there'll be a few of those warm balls in the bag tomorrow afternoon with Mr Rosenthal. We'll keep an eye out for that.
scurrilous stuff. Absolutely. I, I don't imagine Jim Rosenthal would ever have a thought <laughs> like that.